So it's been a little bit since I did an update to my preset library. And that's just because it's taken a really long time to perfect the way that I've been capturing the acoustic IRs. And also I wanted to make sure that all the presets that are being added to this update, which is free, by the way, for anyone who had purchased it in the past, I wanted to make sure that they're up to the same standard that everything else in there is. The way I've always created presets, and this is a library I've been working on for the past three plus years that I've owned the Helix. Um, I'll usually create them on my studio monitors here at home with HX Edit in front of me. That's convenient. Then I'll test it out on PA speakers and a JBL tower system that I own uh, at at least 90 decibels. And then over the course of a few months, um, I'll use them in different venues with different musical groups, just making sure everything sounds and sits right in a full band mix at, at gig volume, uh, making minor adjustments as needed. Finally, I'll take it back to uh, the computer here, make sure everything's leveled correctly across uh, all the different folders within the library. Uh, and then I actually, one of the most time consuming parts of this actually is creating this PDF, which has detailed info on all of the presets. Uh, so there's a 111 presets in this bundle by now, which sounds like a lot, but it's, like I said, it's been a project over the last few years and everything's sorted really well. We can move through here. I'll show you, uh, like we have a couple different versions of presets for acoustic guitars, depending on what type of pickup you have. And these go along with the IRs that I've created. We have a single preset for banjo, some stuff for mandolin, nylon string, acoustic guitar, ukulele. Uh, and then I have versions for electric bass with flat one strings, nine presets, and then the same nine presets that I've idealized for use with a, an electric bass that has round wounds on it. Of course, plenty of electric guitar presets. I think this is 33, just going off my memory, something like 19 or 15 uh, presets for single coil guitars. Um, the impulse response folder, which we'll get to in a second. Plenty of presets for jazz guitar. Then I have a folder that is new, uh, this this is just a bunch of special effects ones, and a lot of these synth presets are brand new as well. Uh, and then for the people that play violin, this is also filled with a bunch of violin presets that I like to use. So anyway, this video is just meant uh, as uh, a reminder for anyone who had purchased this in the past, could have been like two years ago, that this update is available, it's free, uh, and the way you'll find it is just find the PDF that you had gotten when you downloaded this the first time, and then here is your link in a Google Drive, you can just log on there and get your update for free. Right now, I want to talk through all of the impulse responses that have been added uh, with this update. Uh, and I'll start here with the most traditional sense of an IR, and then I'll get talking about the acoustic ones. This is a capture I did of my Mesa Boogie Express um, cabinet. So it is a single G12, a Celestian Vintage 30 speaker, uh, and I've captured it with a number of different microphones. Uh, and my idea with this versus other IR packs that are out there is that I had recorded the preamp and power amp sound uh, into my computer, and then I reamped that through a solid state. Um, anyway, I don't need to get through all the technical details, but what happened was I recorded this thing, I played back through the amp, and really spent a lot of time dialing in the mic position for all of these different microphones that I've captured the cab with, so that... At the end of the day, you end up with a low number of IRs that are really getting a great rep representation of how that cabinet sounds versus, I know some people like to make IR bundles with 100 plus IRs in it, uh, and to me, that's just a lot of wasted time sorting through it, trying to find the right ones. So yeah, we have IRs created with a short Beta 52A and then a Sennheiser E906, Bear Dynamic M88, which is one of my favorite dynamic mics. We have a Sennheiser MD421 for that really aggressive, uh, heavy kind of heavy metal sound. Electro Voice RE20, this guy. Uh, then we have a Shure SM7B, Shure SM57. I have a bunch of 57s, and incredibly, they all sound different. This is my favorite one <laughs> that I used. Uh, and then a vintage 1970s Shure SM61, which is an omnidirectional mic. So this is in the single mics folder. And then I've also created two folders here where I added a Neumann U87 uh, in the room to capture a little bit of the room ambience. So a common complaint with people that use digital modelers direct is that it doesn't sound like an amp in the room. Uh, and so this is my attempt to make it sound a little bit more realistic, right? So the single mics are just close mic captures, usually within uh, half inch to two or two and a half inches back and then in different areas of the speaker. Uh, there's a whole detailed PDF with that too, if you like that stuff. And then the dual mic folders, one version where I've aligned the phase has a little bit of less of an effect, but if you're really sensitive to phase issues, you'll 
like this one, I think. Uh, and then the non-aligned version, which has a more dramatic room sound to it, a little bit more authentic, but it does have some phase issues. Uh, so I used a Neumann U87 in the room about three feet back from the cab and blended it in there with the close-miced IRs that I had. Uh, and of course, even though the Helix operates at 48 kilohertz, and that's what you're going to want to use, I provided versions uh, at 44.1, 88.2, and 96 for anyone that might want to use it with a different modeler. Here's a list I created of common modelers uh, and their sampler rates. That was very long-winded, sorry. Uh, let's get into the acoustic IRs if you're into this, and there's gonna be a link in the description if anyone hasn't purchased this yet, or uh, if you need to get in contact with, with me, you can't find your PDF. Let me know, uh, find your order number, and just send me an email through the contact form on my website, and I can hit you up with the updated version. Uh, we have acoustic guitar IRs, classical guitar IRs, and then mandolin and ukulele IRs. So these are actually less traditional impulse responses. Your unit's not going to th know the difference. What this actually is is an EQ match. I've been doing this for a while, although in the last month or so, EQ matches, I guess, have gotten a little bit more popular with preset creators. Um, this is a way that I've been comparing the mic'd sound of an acoustic guitar. It sounds beautiful. It sounds like it was recorded in a really nice studio. Uh, and I compare that sound essentially with the sound from a number of different acoustic guitar pickups. You can see all the different versions here. Uh, and then I create a number of different um, EQ matches. So these are very specific EQ curves designed to make the pickup sound sound a little bit closer to the, uh, the mic'd version of that instrument. So we have versions for guitars that have a body transducer pickup like a contact piezo on the inside of the instrument, such as the K and K Pure Mini. We have IRs here for if your guitar has a magnetic pickup, and then IRs for generally bright sounding or generally dark sounding under saddle piezos. Uh, and again, a detailed PDF on that. Just like that folder, I also did the same for a nylon string classical guitar, uh, the same for a ukulele, and then uh, the same for a mandolin. The violin IRs, I'm going to update a little bit later. Um, this has taken a lot, a lot of time, and I just wanted to get the update out before I waited any longer. So let's talk about some of the presets that have been added. We have presets for acoustic instruments, four presets. If you have a contact piezo, four presets. I'll have to fix that name. If you have a, a magnetic pickup on your acoustic, four presets. If you have an undersaddle piezo. And of course, within these presets, they're using the IRs that I created. You can flip through the different IR options. There's like five per uh, per folder, per pickup type, and you can really tune in um, the the sound of these presets to, to get it where you want it. I have a single preset if you're a banjo player, um, and then I have a couple presets here for mandolin, whether the pickup is in the bridge or is a contact piezo. Here's a few presets for a nylon string acoustic guitar with an undersaddle piezo, and then finally uh, two presets for ukulele. These bass presets were added months and months ago. I think that's a computer glitch actually showing me these presets that don't have names. Um, so we have nine presets for an electric bass with flat wound strings. That's the F. And then the same nine presets that I've idealized for use with an instrument with round wound strings. Uh, 33, I believe, presets for an electric guitar with humbuckers. A couple presets, 15, 12 or something, with, for an electric guitar with single coils. Uh, and a lot of these are using the IRs I created from my Mesa Boogie. Then we have presets for jazz guitar, which was from an update about a year ago. Um, and then plenty of the violin presets. If you're just a violin player or just a bass player, of course, I've made it possible to buy just those presets um, to save a little bit of money here. And then I have a special effects folder. Let's actually start here because there's some pretty interesting stuff. So let's start with Basic Freeze. This is a preset I had created uh, a while ago. Uh, this is with the Poly Sustain block, and it's just meant to be a momentary switch that lets you sustain a tone if you wanted to play over top of it. You can switch it pretty easily to be latching if you wanted to, and then there's a bunch of effects. Um, we have a Dynamic Freeze preset, I called it. So this one's really interesting. It uses essentially a Boss Slow Gear, like an auto swell, to determine, you know, the volume of the sustaining tone. So the longer you hold down the freeze button, the louder the volume is going to be. Right. And then you can cut it uh, if you want to. That's the panic button, I call it. 
Uh, we have a what this one's kind of silly. It's a I thought it reminded me of a, a Korg Maiku sound, so uh, I just threw that one in there. Let's take a look at the synth presets. This is a collection of presets I've created to actually make use of the synth blocks and the helix, which a common complaint has been that people can't get them to sound good at all. Uh, most of these are monophonic, so keep that in mind. Uh, and basically, here's the secret, by the way. Um, you just need to compress the heck out of the input and send a really hot signal into the, the pitch blocks, into the synth blocks, whatever you're using. Uh, and that's how it works. If you're going to edit these presets, be really careful that you don't delete the one that's bringing it down to a reasonable volume because you might hurt yourself or blow your speakers or something. It's really loud from about here to here in the presets. Um, if you're on an electric guitar, I recommend using a bridge pickup, but these will work pretty much with any instrument. And then within each preset, I have a number of different sounds. All right, so there's the, the first preset. We have a, I called it warm lead. It's got a little bit of a glissando effect. tracks pretty well on fast notes, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't know what that was. Uh, then we have one of the oldest presets I have, which is a recreation of Pat Metheny's famous synth guitar sound. Same thing, it's monophonic. That's why it didn't track too well when I did the octaves. Uh, soft pad does actually not use a synth block, so this one is polyphonic. And it's meant to fill the space uh, of a, what like a dark analog synth pad would, would do. And then I have different effects here. And then a hold button. Just like with the freeze preset. So if I press this while I'm playing a note, that'll actually sustain that very lightly. And I can do some other chords. So, yeah, this is a pretty fun one. Triad pad is unique, uh, I'll say. So... Back to monophonic, you play one note, and it harmonizes it either with a major triad or a minor triad, and I have the buttons set up, foot switches, to switch between major and minor, uh, and then you can actually get rid of the third and the chord altogether, so it's just a root and a fifth, and then some effects to throw on top if you want. Uh, preset for sub bass. This one surprisingly does track reasonably well, um, and that's because I've used a crossover block. I have a whole video on that if you wanted to check that out using the, the crossover uh, to make polyphonic, normally not polyphonic presets track a little bit better. Yeah, so it's just a preset for a synth bass sound. alternate sound here some effects you can add in so. and the delay is only on the, the higher line it's not actually in the the sub bass so it won't get too muddy a preset that i've just filled out with a bunch of different uh snapshots you can use of the dynamic hall block that was added a while ago some ambient presets uh and i really don't know if i want to make this video super long go through all the acoustic stuff just know that there's probably gonna be a bunch of videos coming demoing all these acoustic presets so 
I hope this video was helpful in, in filling you in on what's been added. There's also a few new electric guitar presets that I didn't mention. Um, so if you're just a more traditional player uh, that's playing mostly electric guitar, I think there's still some stuff in there that you're going to benefit from. Uh, and especially the IRs, the Mesa Boogie IRs. That's probably my favorite part of this whole update. Anyway, um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or get in contact with me directly through my website. There's a contact form. It's like alexpricemusician.com slash contact, and you'll that'll email me directly. Anyway, thanks for everyone's support over the years with this bundle. We've had hundreds of supporters, and I get requests for uh, presets to add in all the time. I'm happy to accommodate most of those as long as they're within my wheelhouse, and I feel like I can do them well. I had someone that wanted some sugar tones, and I'll tell you, I'm not that guy uh, for that. These are more loosely based towards traditional electric guitar stuff some cool stuff with synth and then plenty of acoustic instrument presets too. So a little bit in there for everyone. I guarantee you not everyone's going to use all of it. Um, however, there's, I think there's still a lot of stuff in there to fit a wide range of people. If you want to try any of my presets before you buy this big bundle, by the way, I have some free stuff on my website. Just head to the Helix page, scroll to the bottom, and there's two free preset bundles there for you. Take care. If you made it through this far in the video, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.